One way to save money for your children is to fund their retirement, which might seem like an odd thing to do because you're not going to be around to see it, but it actually makes use of the hugely powerful effects of compounding over long periods of time. Plus, in the UK and the US, there are very tax-efficient structures, which I'll talk about in the video, which allow you to do that. So now let's look at how to make your child a millionaire in a bit more detail. What we're actually doing here is maximizing the greatest resource which a baby has, which is time. Because although we can try and maximize the return on our investments, what we can't do is extend our lifespan. Setting aside money for your child's retirement savings is a little bit like being a cathedral builder in the sense that you won't be around to see the benefits of what you've created. And as a young boy, I spent a lot of time in this building, which is Worcester Cathedral, and I was always astonished by the beauty of what had been created by our ancestors. And really what they'd created was an intergenerational gift. And that's what you're trying to produce with one of these retirement savings accounts. In the UK, there's a very tax-efficient savings account called a Junior Self-Invested Personal Pension, or Junior SIP. There are annual caps on how much you can put into the account, and currently that's just under £3,000 a year, but that probably will increase over time. But because this is money that's paid in before tax is paid, you actually get a 20% tax relief for your child. So that grosses up the amount that you actually put in every year to 3600 Now, until the child is 18, you will be the person who decides what gets bought in the account. Although, as we'll see, that's pretty easy. But then at age 18, hopefully your child will be responsible in choosing the investments which go into the account. But I'd say the big benefit of this account is that your child won't be able to touch the money until they're age 55. And the reason why that's great is because it enforces this discipline of having a long-term mindset. They really don't have a choice about it. Now, the rules might change over time. For example, in 2028, there's talk about increasing the age at which you can retrieve the money up to 57. In the US, you can do something similar with a Roth individual retirement account. The big difference between a junior SIP and a Roth IRA is that your child will have to actually earn the money. You can't just put the money in on their behalf. So the actual cap in this case is $6,000, or their taxable earnings for the year. Now, obviously, kids aren't going to earn much, so that's an immediate problem with this kind of structure. So your kids will end up doing a lot of paper rounds and lemonade stands in order to generate that $6,000. And you, as the parent, will be the custodian of the account until the child reaches age 18 in most states, but in some states that age is as high as 21. Now, you can actually withdraw the money from a Roth IRA before you reach the age of retirement, which in the US is currently 59 and a half, but it does incur tax penalties. So this is like a soft constraint, which ensures that the child won't touch the money until they retire. Now, if your child wants to use some of the money for their college education, they can, and there they're not charged a withdrawal penalty, which is usually 10%. Or if they're buying a house, they can use up to $10,000 of the account for a deposit or for closing costs. But ideally, the child should be coached to try and keep as much money in it as they can for as long as they can, because then they'll really see the effects of compounding. Now let's look at what kind of long-term return your children should expect. The definitive source for that would be Dimson, Marsh and Staunton. And here you can see the real return on US stock, US bonds and US bills, which are short-term bonds, over the last 120 years. And you can see that equity is won by a very large margin. On average, it's returned 6.6% above inflation over that 120-year period. So if the future resembles the past, having any bonds at all in your portfolio for your child makes almost no sense. If you compare equity return above the rate of inflation across the world, you can see that in almost all countries, equity, which is the light green bar, has returned more than bonds and short-term bonds. So this isn't just an artifact of investing in the US. And the bar that you can see beside me here, which has 5.2% above it, is the global equity return above the rate of inflation. So we'll use this historic 5.2% return above inflation for equity for the rest of this video. Now, 5.2% doesn't seem like much of a return, but what does that mean for your child's investments? If you like our content and you want to support us, you can always do that directly via YouTube by clicking on the Join button under this video. 
So let's say we invest at a rate of 5.2% for 65 years. Then every pound or dollar that you invest will be worth 27 times as much in 65 years time. The rate of interest certainly helps massively, but what helps even more is the long compounding period. That's what gives us such a huge multiplier for every dollar or pound which we invest today. So if we take one annual contribution into a UK junior SIP, which is 3,600, and we compound it over that 65 year period, then that's going to turn into about 100K at your child's retirement date. If that's true, we can look at how much you need to save to make your child a millionaire at retirement. If you invest £3,600 for 15 years, that'll be sufficient to give you a million pounds at retirement if you then leave it for 50 years and do nothing with it except for invest it in global equity. In fact, it'll give you a little bit more than a million if you invest at that 5.2% rate. But what about inflation, you might ask? Wouldn't a million buy a lot less in the future than it would today? Well, that's true, but remember that 5.2% was how much global equity has beaten the rate of inflation. So the actual monetary value of your child's investment pot will be closer to about 3.8 million in 65 years time. Just as your investments compound a lot over 65 years, so do your fees. So fees matter a lot over these periods of time. My go-to for explaining this is always Larry Bates's T-Rex calculator. And this is just looking at one of those £3,600 payments compounded over 65 years, assuming a rate of return of 5.2%. Now, if your annual fees are 1%, you'd only get to keep half of your gains. The other half will go to your child's fund manager and to their platform. If your fees are just half a percent every year, then now you get to keep much more of your return. The T-Rex score is now 72%, so you're keeping three quarters of your gains. But how could we do even better than that? Well, for starters, you could pay less for the funds you buy. If you stick to developed market equity, usually the fees are much lower. For example, the ongoing charges for this VEVE fund from Vanguard in the UK is just 0.12% per year. A global equity fund, which includes emerging markets, will often have a fee which is almost twice as high. And the fact is that over your child's lifetime, a lot of these emerging markets will turn into developed markets. In fact, the term emerging markets may no longer apply. The cheapest developed market global equity fund I could find in the UK was this one from Amundi. The letters DR above are very important. That means that any dividends which are generated by the fund are automatically reinvested back into the fund. That means there's no work required on your part in order to reinvest the dividends. It's an accumulation fund. And the ongoing charges for this fund are absolutely tiny, just 0.05% per year. An equivalent fund for US investors would be this one from Vanguard, which is the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF with ticker VT. And that also has a tiny ongoing charge of just 0.08% per year. Another way to save money is to pay less for your investment platform or broker. There aren't many junior SIP accounts available in the UK, but the cheapest one at the moment seems to be from Fidelity, and you can see they don't charge a service fee on the investment at all for their junior SIPs. But if we look at their other fees, you can see that you will still pay for trades at £10 per trade. Now, if you do a single trade with your maximum contribution, which is just under £3,000, that £10 is equivalent to 0.3% of your invested amount. But if you split it up into 12 monthly payments, suddenly that increases to 4.2%. So because they're charging you for every transaction, it makes sense to have less transactions. So I think having fees of below 0.1% is quite feasible. And if you manage that, then your efficiency of your investments increases massively. Now your child gets to keep 95% of their gains. So shopping around for a cheap platform and a cheap global fund makes your life easy and ensures your child keeps most of their wealth. The goal here is not to enrich the fund management industry. The goal is to enrich your child. So I think it's incredible that over a 15 year period, you can save enough to give your child a very comfortable retirement. And another benefit of this approach is that they'll be engaged with the investment themselves, which they'll be managing after the age of 18. And it forces them to have this long term mindset, which is probably the best way to be successful in investing. And as always, thank you for listening.